Shakespeare. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. <sighs> hey book lovers, Kaylee here, and welcome back to the Enchanted Library. I decided to put uh, good old Yorick on my shelves there because I want him to oversee me do the Shakespeare tag. I saw this tag going around and I really, really wanted to do it and I had planned on doing it, but then the lovely Megan over at the May Cave had tagged me, so this is the response to her tag. And this tag revolves around specific Shakespeare plays. So without further ado, let's get into this. The first play is Much Ado About Nothing, and the question for that one is your favorite bickering couple that everyone just knows really cares about each other, and that can be either romantic or friendship. So I picked one of each of those. I picked a romantic and I picked a platonic friendship. And the romantic I don't think is going to come as a surprise, but it is Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice. Everyone knows the story of Elizabeth and Darcy, and I just think that if anything encompasses truly two people who bicker incessantly but are really meant for each other, it's this story. They, yes, they do bicker a lot, hence the Pride and Prejudice. For the platonic, I decided to go with Claire and Bannon, and they are from The Iron Worm Affair by Lilla St. Crow, and this is kind of, best way to describe it, it's like a steampunky, mentath, sorcerer kind of series. There's three books in total, but Claire and Bannon are totally platonic, they look out for each other, it's just, it's a really great dichotomy, and they bicker so, so much because they never really see eye to eye. And this is actually a series I might be rereading soon because I miss those two. Number two is Measure for Measure. Name a book that's plot or genre is really, really hard to describe. For this question, I decided to go with a more recent read uh, because I have been trying to get more and more people in my circle to read it and it was really, really hard for me to describe, so I just thought that it would work perfectly, and that is Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. And I feel like the reason why this one is so hard to explain is because of the type of format that it's written in, as well as the plot, because you don't get anything from the sleeve of the book. You get nothing really helping you along with the synopsis of the story. It's one of those that you just have to read it and experience it yourself. So for that reason, I find it a little bit difficult to describe to people. And in a way, I don't really want to describe it for, to people because I want them to just be surprised with how everything happens and what is exactly going on. Question number three is A Midsummer Night's Dream. And this is asking you for a favorite book that involves fairies or elves. I found this one a little bit more difficult because a lot of people are picking Shadowhunters and Lord of the Rings. And those are gimmies to me. Like definitely Shadowhunters and Lord of the Rings are awesome for fairies, which would be shadow hunters and elves in Lord of the Rings. But I kind of wanted to switch it up a little bit and I'm gonna go with a middle grade read that I actually read and found out about when I was in high school, so still a long time ago. But that is Artemis Fowl by Owen Colfer, I believe. I've been reading this for so long, I, for whatever reason, still don't know 100% if that's how you pronounce his name. But this one, all about fairies. There's, it's just, it's such a fun read. I think that every middle grade reader should read this series because it's just, it's so, so fun. I actually should be bringing this up to a few of my cousins soon, so then that way hopefully they'll get into this as well. Question number four is Hamlet, an underutilized female character. I feel like there are so many underutilized female characters. It's just, it's hard to pick just one, but I'm going to go with one that I have not really rediscovered recently, but I've been thinking a lot more about recently, and that's Susan Pevensey from The Chronicles of Narnia. Now, the reason that I think that she is so underutilized, I mean, I did enjoy all of her parts in the story, but I just, she could have gotten so much more. Her end was not an end that I think she deserved, and I don't think was actually planned by C.S. Lewis. So for that reason, I'm picking Susan Pevensey, Chronicles of Narnia as an underutilized female character. Question number five is all about the sonnets. Choose your favorite poem. Surprisingly, there's actually quite a few that I could choose from, and a fair amount of those are admittedly from Shakespeare. But the poem that always draws me back is actually one that I first heard about when I first read Anne of Green Gables, and that is The Lady of Shalott. 
it's more encompassing a story and it tells a tale in verse. So that is one of the things that has really drawn me to the Lady of Shalott and I'm just going to read a little snippet of it for you. This is the second verse in part one. Um, part two I think is the more well known but I'm going to read the second verse here. Willows whiten, aspens shiver, the sunbeam showers break and quiver, in the stream that runneth ever, by the island in the river, flowing down to Camelot. Four gray walls and four gray towers overlook a space of flowers, and the silent isle embowers the Lady of Shalott. I, I just think it's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, if you do have some time or you want something to do, I recommend reading it. It has so much that is in there. There's a curse, there's Camelot, there, oh, it's just, it's so good. Question number six is Richard III, a protagonist who will do anything to get what they want. For this one, I almost picked Katniss Everdeen, but then I decided that there is some things that she wouldn't do. Um, the that is a very thin, thin line, but <laughs> there are some things. So I ended up going with Arya Stark from the Song of Ice and Fire series. And I feel like everybody knows of Arya. She is a badass. She will get the job done. She has her list. She is sticking to that list. And she will do anything to get to that point. And it's just... oh. It's so good. Arya is like my favorite character of this entire series and I just, I want everything to work out for her so much. Question number seven revolves around Antony and Cleopatra. This one's a little bit longer so I'm actually going to read it. Your favorite trope, bookish buzzword, historical figure, etc. for which you still haven't found the perfect book. I'm actually going to pick a genre as well as a figure because these are two things that I've been searching diligently for and have not yet found the perfect book. Some have come close, but not quite. So the first one is steampunk. I feel like the steampunk subgenre does not have enough in it, and I just haven't been able to find the perfect book. That being said, because I can't find the perfect book, I have... <laughs> come up with the book that I want and I'm just gonna write it because you know what if you can't find it just do it so that is something that is an ongoing project for me but I'm finding it satisfying for now I just wish that I could find a book out there in the wild that satisfied my steampunk needs and then the historical figure is Robin Hood I love the story of Robin Hood the classic tale is great but I just want more and it's so hard to come by. I <laughs> I remember looking through the fantasy section and I got so excited because I saw Robin and I saw H.O. and I thought that that was going to be a Robin Hood story so I plucked it off the shelf right away and then I realized it was the author's name, Robin Hobb. <laughs> and I was so sad. But I still read his book and hey, I liked it. But it wasn't Robin Hood and it wasn't what I wanted. So then I just kept on, I'm still looking for the perfect Robin Hood story and that's another one I can't find so I'm writing one myself and that is another work in progress so <laughs> I find that that is how I cope with things for now but again it would be nice to find one out in the wild and embrace it and have it be awesome but I have not found that yet. Question number eight is all about Titus Andronicus and that is a lesser known book by a popular author that you think more people should read. This is one that I'm pretty sure I have spoken about before, but it is Sea of Shadows by Kelly Armstrong. This is a trilogy that follows two twin sisters and they each have magical powers that's all about bringing souls to the next stage of their being. And it is so much more than that and it encompasses so much more than that and it also has adventure in it and long journeys and it's just... It's so well done and I love the perspectives from both of the sisters because it does alternate. Each chapter is a different sister perspective and I just had so much fun reading this series. I was so sad when it was done and I was so I was lucky enough to meet Kelly Armstrong and we spoke about this series 
and she did say she was also bummed that it's done at three but she has to go with what the public wants and not enough people were picking up this series so she ended up finishing it at a trilogy so that was really saddening so clearly not enough people have read this series or have heard of it so i just want to do a push to read this series even though no more is coming from it it's a well done trilogy and i would just really recommend it question number nine is king lear a complex female anti-hero or villain i picked another recent read for this question because it was still really fresh in my mind and i just the villain in this was just so good you actually don't realize how complex the villain is until the end so i just i really really recommend it and that is everless by sarah holland so this one i find the payoff is really in the last few chapters so even if it takes you a little bit to get through know that what you're reading is only a setup for what is to come like it starts out as one particular type of story but it evolves very quickly at the end to being something that opens up a whole other world so i really recommend reading this one and yes the villain i think is very complex and is going to get even more complex in the sequel and question number 10 is the taming of the shrew and that is picking two very polarizing books one that you hated and one that you loved i'm going to start with the one that i hated because i don't want to end on a bad note and that is 50 shades of gray and I don't really want to talk about it because it's such a bad book and that is where we're going to leave that but if you want to hear more about my thoughts on Fifty Shades you can click the little thing above my head and it will bring you over to my emotions tag now the opposite of that is love and I'm going to go with Shocker, not Poison Study because I'm trying to be a little less predictable but Poison Study still love it um, <laughs> but I decided to pick the same author, Maria V. Snyder, and her first book in the Touch of Power series. I absolutely love this book almost as much as I love Poison Study, and it's just... Oh, Maria V. Snyder writes such good series. Like, I just, I love all of her characters. I love the plots that she comes up with. Like, this one in particular follows a healer, and she is basically the last healer of her kind because all of the other healers have been murdered because they were thought to have brought on this plague. So she is in hiding, trying to still be true to her healer self, and she ends up being found out and enlisted to help save a king. And it's just, it's craziness of everything that happens from there. And then there's like a love story in there, and it's just adventure and action and it, I don't find this lags at all. Like, I guess you could consider it a bit of a thicker read, but I just, it was constant. It was nonstop. I absolutely love this series. So I really recommend picking up Touch of Power by Maria B. Snyder. And the last question is really the end of the tag. Now, give me your hands if we be friends. In common speak, that is, it's time to tag someone. Actually, three people to be exact. The three booktubers that I'm going to tag is the Three Bookshelves, Peru's Project, and Little Book Owl. So it would be awesome if you guys let them know that they have been tagged because I'm really curious to see what they come up with for their answers. And obviously, if you wanna do this tag, feel free, consider yourself tagged, and be sure to like this video and subscribe for more videos because I do put new ones out every weekend. And that is people running outside my hall. So yes, be sure to like this video if you did and share with your friends. Also subscribe because I do put out new videos every weekend and I'm also starting, I think this week, I might be starting to put up bonus videos. I'm gonna do a little trial run. So click the bell icon so that way you're notified whenever I put those out. And until next time, keep reading.